I talked about the syllabus. The next thing I'm going to do is go through this metacognition PowerPoint, and I'm going to literally run through it, spend about 20 minutes or so. All right. So again, the goal for this PowerPoint is basically, I think one of the reasons students struggle in K-1 or K-16 or any other courses that they take, which are deemed hard by professors or students alike, all right, is their use of ineffective study strategies. So basically, this metacognition PowerPoint will kind of help you see some of the good ways to study smarter in a smart way rather than studying harder. All right, so without further ado, and again, I'm going to spend about 20 minutes or so. All right, so the slides that I took, I took it from Dr. Sandra McGuire. So she was a famous professor at Louisiana State University who did two or three uh, cool experimental study, right? Science education experimental study and found that if she show these effective studying strategies to students and then making sure that she harped on it or she reviewed these effective learning strategies to students at least once or twice a week during the course of the semester, most of the students tended to do well. All right. So her evidence, this is what Robert, Christy, Blanche, and Joshua, all this course that you see in the black was before they employed this studying effective learning strategies. So they had a score of 42, 60, 63. And after that, they went and chatted with Dr. Sandra McGuire. And then she talked to them about what, what are some of the effective learning strategies. So basically, look, this PowerPoint slide that I'm going to show you. And then look at this course in red as to how they improved after they started employing these effective learning strategies. All right. And here's on the example as well. All right. So here is this research that he did, and it was published in Journal of Chemical Education. Look at the exam one, two, and the final course average of the students who attended this session, where she literally talked to this PowerPoint that I'm going to talk about, where she mentioned the effective learning strategies, how you can be involved in metacognition, versus the students who did not take part or who were not exposed to these learning strategies. So if you see overall, right, look at the exam two average. Exam one average, almost the same. That tells you the both these group of students start on the same foot, but look at the final course grade, almost like 11% gain in the students who attended, attended or implored these effective learning strategies technique. All right. So the first thing that I want to ask you is this question. How do you respond to failure? Take about 30 to 45 minutes on the sketch piece of paper. Write down how do you generally respond to failure? So I think this might be a good time to pause the video. All right. So basically, if I create a category, right? So based on the 160 responses, let's say if I had received those responses, trust me, those responses Right. Probably students will either say, oh, I just go inside my cocoon and I just keep sticking to whatever learning strategies that I've been using. All right. Or many students hopefully categorize their responses as to how they respond to failure in these three ways. All right. And then science education has said that chemical education has said that these are most the most effective ways to respond to failure if you want to succeed after you fail down. So first thing is having you that you have a growth mindset, right? Remember, whenever I say growth mindset, if you say that, yes, I always make mistakes, and if you do not take precautions to correct them, all right, you will never succeed. We all make mistakes. I do. Like literally yesterday night, I was making this slide for KM 115, right? I was recording for my students, and there was a question about chemical change and physical change in a pictorial form. It might have been in the nighttime because I created those uh, videos around like midnight, 
I leave my time for bed. But then I made a mistake, right? But then I posted the lecture video and I was like, oh, shoot. I think there had to be at least one compounds example that Alex should have given. And I went back and lo and behold, guess what? I had made a mistake. And as soon as I realized that, I looked at and then thought about how, why did I make mistake, right? And then I sent an email out to all the students pointing out a mistake and how they should be thinking about this question. Right? So again, learn from them. And the other thing that I want to point out is, remember, intelligence, it can be learned. It is not innate character. Intelligence in, is not an innate character. It can be learned, and it is definitely malleable. The other one is the failure is within your control. The reasons of your failure is with your control. In your control. Remember that. All right. That means whenever if something is your control, means find a solution. Right. Let's cope with the failure. As to how to cope with the failure is to seek assistance. There are various ways to seek assistance. Right. And one of the ways is definitely coming to our office hours. We have six hours within, like, the three GJs and myself. We have six office hours every week. So come to our office hours. Ask us questions. We definitely will be more than glad to help you out. All right. But the other ways is as you come to our office hour, as you are studying, making sure you employ the metacognitive strategies. All right. But then what the heck are these metacognitive strategies is what I'm going to talk through in the slides, follow up, following slides. When once I click on it, it doesn't let me change slides. Come on. Ah. All right. Good. All right. So here's some solutions that help you rise up, right? So I said something about six solutions. And there are different ways to respond to a failure, right? And then some solutions that help you rise up is getting the most out of your, out of your homework and notes. So we have the Alex homework. We have the knowledge checks homework. So making sure you're getting the most out of them. And learning chemistry, not studying chemistry. And I will, we will talk about the distinction between those two terms. And finally, using metacognitive learning strategies such that you are not only memorizing stuff, but also learning how to apply the materials that you have memorized. All right. All right, so but then how do you get the most out of your homework? All right, so first thing, again, you start the problems early that they are assigned, right? I have already assigned your Alex homework that is due on Wednesday. Do not wait until Wednesday. There are some maths problems, right? The one that's due, the prerequisite review, all right? They are due Wednesday. There are some math problems. Do not start Wednesday at 10 p.m., probably too late. Start the problems today. That way you are spacing all those problems out and not being overwhelmed by those concepts. And whenever we work through this problem, right? Yes, Alex is going to show the solution to you. And then, yes, you can take screenshot and then copy and paste the solution and then cheat, right? So instead of doing that, work on a problem. And then for the next problem, try to work it out without looking at your notes and see if you can work them yourself. And whenever you are working through those, do not give up too soon, right? Less than 15 minutes. If you are giving up, means you are not putting in the time. Finally, do not spend too much time on them. If you are spending more than 30 minutes for a problem, means you spend too much time, all right? Either come to our office hours or look back to the way the problem was solved and then internalize how it was done, all right? And that is when the term metagonition is going to come in. Anytime you do your homework, anytime you study, I recommend you are using these metacognitive strategies. All right. And we'll get there. What does it mean? All right. So I already talked about this. All right. So basically, now the goal of this session is to hopefully, after watching these PowerPoint slides on metacognition, you analyze your current learning strategies for chemistry 116. Sorry, I didn't change that understand exactly what things you need to make to better your grade in the course. And then hopefully you'll have some concrete strategies set out. Oh, this is how I'm going to study for K-16 during the summer session. And 
beyond any other courses, right? You can definitely use these study strategies in physics, calculus, and other liberal arts courses that you take here at WVU. And then, and this is what's new to understand, right? Is studying harder is important, but again, studying smarter is also very, very necessary for you to get a good grade in KMR16. All right, so we talked about, I said, oh, you should be learning chemistry, not studying chemistry. What do those two terms mean? So I have a question for you. So is it hard to make an A on the test or do you think is it harder to teach the material to a class? And most of you guys, most of you all are thinking that, oh, definitely teaching the material to the class, right? And why do you think it is hard to teach material to the class? So if you are studying to make an A on the test, you are studying chemistry. But if you are learning to teach the matter to the class, you are learning chemistry. Because now, instead of just memorizing stuff, when you are teaching the material, you're kind of going beyond than just memorizing. You are thinking about, oh, how can I apply these problems? All right. Or what are some of the questions that can be expected whenever I teach this material to the class? That's why I want you to be learning chemistry rather than studying chemistry. So if you have been in the study mode, make sure you transition to the learn mode. Ask questions, make sure the concept that you are learning, you are able to teach to someone else. So study the material, or I would say not even study, learn the material as you, you have to teach to the, teach the material to someone else, all right? Not just make an A on the test. If you just are able to, if you're able to study or learn the material as if you have to teach the material, trust me, you'll definitely get an A in this class. All right. So why is this important? Why learning chemistry is important? Why is studying chemistry sufficient? Because Chem 116 or Chem 115 is harder than the high school chemistry that you took for AP Chem when you're in high school, right? So the course moves a lot faster. On top of that, this is a summer course, right? Summer course, it's condensed and definitely is going to move a lot faster and I'm going to teach so many concepts. You are, are all are trying to internalize so many concepts, right? Within a short frame of time. The material is definitely considerably more difficult and cumulative, believe it or not. The material does get cumulative as you move on to exam two and so on. And finally, the problems are more involved and the tests are not straightforward, right? You're not just going to get one plus one equals to two. You're going to have to solve so through this series of steps, right? So let's say I might ask you to calculate the freezing point depression and I might add on the layer to it, all right? For that problem, you'll have to apply several concepts at one time before you put in your answer on eCampus, right? And then this is where this concept of taking the photograph for exam work and then submitting to your graduate teaching assistants comes into play, right? So let's say there was a multiple choice question problem where you had five choices and you worked hard, like worked through like half of the page and you input picked one of the answer and lo and behold, the answer was wrong. But the work that you did was almost correct, it means you are definitely going to get the 50% points back for showing or being able to do that work correctly. All right, that's what applying several concepts at one time will come to your favor whenever you do your exam work and show the work. All right, so let me show you as to what I mean by learning rather than studying. All right, so this was the question I gave. So this is an evidence from exam two from spring 2020 for K-115. So this was the question from the exam that the students took while the exam was being monitored, right? Which of the following is a weak electrolyte? And these are the choices. Now, 
before the exam, I give out some practice questions to students so they can kind of get a sense of what the questions might look like in exam two, right? So this is the question from practice question, practice exam. Same question, which of the following is a weekly left right, which of the following is a weekly left right. All I did was change these choices a little bit. The answer in the practice exam was NH3, which is ammonia. All right. And guess what? Those students who were studying rather than learning the material responded ammonia. About 40% of the responses in the class was ammonia. What, which was the correct answer? Both B and C, ammonia as well as S2SO3. They didn't spend some time understanding as to first thing, what is a weak electrolyte? And then why NaNO3 or S2SO4, not S2SO3, right? S2SO3 is a weak electrolyte, whereas S2SO4 is a strong electrolyte. They didn't spend that time internalizing even these answer choices. And this is what you are doing when you are learning. You are looking at all the answer choices during the price exam and then internalizing and then questioning as to why this is not the correct answer, why this is not the correct answer. And not just memorizing, oh, NS3 is a weak electrolyte because you'll probably end up choosing B as the answer, which will get you in trouble. All right, so now I use this term metacognition so many times, right? But then what is metacognition? What does this term mean? So I want you to think about, let's say when you are, when you are working through a problem, let's say you get that questions wrong. Right, you work through a problem and you got that problem wrong. What do you do? Do you look at the solution? Oh, and then, oh, this is where I made wrong, right? Or do you just look at the final answer and you see, oh, the final answer is wrong. Do you go back to your problem and try to figure out where you made the mistake and what was the mistake, right? Or let's say if you are working through a problem or you are reviewing for the exam, are you constantly questioning yourself? Am I understanding the material or not? What part of this concept I'm not understanding or I'm understanding? If you are doing all that, what you are being involved is in something called metacognition. All right, so the easy way to define metacognition is it's your ability to Think about your thinking. If you think about your thinking, that's metacognition. If you are monitoring your mental processing, am I understanding the material or not? What part I'm not understanding? How should I understand it? All right. And finally, if you are able to judge your own your level of learning as to let's say if I got answered this if Five, five questions, something like that came in the exam and you solved it. Oh, I think I should be able to get an A if I'm able to solve all these questions, five questions, and then solve it in a way where I have shown all the work correctly and I have shown the correct answer. If you're able to accurately judge your level of learning, you are being involved in metacognition. All right, so again, every time you study, you preview for the lecture make sure you are involved in this process and right, so but as to why why this metacognition is necessary all right so i wanted to look at this term something called bloom's taxonomy there are like five steps right so the first one is knowledge comprehension application and something like that so back to that example of nh3 which of this is a strong electrolyte when 40 percent of the students memorize that nh3 what they were doing is they were memorizing the verbatim information. They were not trying to analyze as to why NS3 was the only weak base in the practice exam. And that's why they struggled. But the students who got the question correct, they were analyzing it, right? They were analyzing the question as well as analyzing the answer choices, 
right, as to why S2SO4 is not a weak electrolyte, why KOS is not a weak electrolyte. So basically, whenever you are involved in metacognition, you move up the ladder. You do not just memorize stuff. You try to apply the principles. You try to analyze those concepts. And that's why being involved in metacognition helps you move up the ladder and succeed in KM115. And if you look at this, look at this. In high school, we just want you to kind of like be involved in knowledge and comprehension, and there are the meaning of these. But in undergraduate courses, you have to start applying and analyzing all those concepts. And once you get to grad school, you have to start synthesizing and evaluating those concepts. Right now, you are undergrad, make sure you are able to at least start analyzing all those questions rather than just try to just memorize everything at once. Right, but then now the question is, I said, okay, you have to move on the Bloom's taxonomy, right? But then how do you do it? I want you to think about this mnemonic called P-A-R-S-A. -A. All right, so what are those is P-A-R-S-A. -A. That's called the mnemonic, right? So what I mean by mnemonic is, you know, those tools that you use to memorize something. So something like, how did you memorize the colors in the rainbow? You know, there are seven colors. The way I memorized is I used a mnemonic called Vibgyor, V-I-B-G-Y-O-R. V stands for violet, I stands for indigo, blue, and so on. All right, that's called mnemonic. So I want you to use this mnemonic, P-A-R-S-A, and then make sure you use this study cycle. By P, I mean preview. What does preview mean? You are looking through the PowerPoint slides before you watch this recorded video lectures. So you have a sense of what are the topics that he'll be covering all right oh and these are the topics that i think i know but then these are the topics that i have to really listen to while he's teaching so that's the concept of previewing something a stands for attending class but for right now think about that as watching the lecture video so whenever you're watching the lecture video take some meaningful notes r stands for reviewing after each class which is really important you do not have to review right away after you finish watching the video lecture but again and by the end of the day, at least it doesn't have to be much, just that 30 to 40 minutes. If you just review the topics that I taught you, it will help you succeed. Next thing is studying. You all know, most of you has, have even played some sports. All the sports schools tell you that, oh, repetition is the key, right? Repetition right here is the key, all right? And that's true even for chemistry. When you work a problem, let's say you work through an ice table, Right. If you just work it once, trust me, you have not grasped the concept. If you repeat it, then you, you start grasping the concept better. Whenever you are studying, ask these questions, why, how, and what if. That is where you are being involved in metacognition. And finally, really important, right? Assessing your learning. Once, let's say, you studied review after class. How do you know you are able, you will be able to answer the exam questions? That is when you randomly pick some questions from Alex or some practice exam questions and see if you can solve it out on a scratch paper. That way you know that if you have learned that material or not. All right, so again, remember this in mnemonic, P-A-R-S-A, and use it in your study strategies. So these are something, uh, make sure you are doing it, right? Along with the study cycle, always solving problems without looking at an example because otherwise it will give you a false sense of learning. Memorize everything you are told to, but the good thing about this class is since this is uh, open book, open notes, you don't have to memorize anything for this course. Always ask why, how, and what if, right? If you can, make sure you test your understanding by giving me lectures on the concepts. Right, because for exam, you are going, going to get some conceptual questions as well. Right, So give, by giving main lectures to either to your friends virtually or, I don't know, to your pet, you can definitely give your main lecture to your cat if you have one, to your dog, or even like some of your stuffed animal. Because while you are giving your main lecture, trust me, you will question yourself, oh, shoot, what didn't I understand about this concept while I was giving this main lecture, all right? and then spending time on chemistry every day and then using the study cycle. And there are some four reasons that students gave me 
uh, whenever they said they didn't do well on in KM 115 in Fall 219. And this will apply to you as well, KM 116 students. They didn't spend enough time on the midfield, started the homework too late, and tried to climb everything in advance. Alex, all right, the students who do good on Alex tend to do good in KM 115 as well. And Dr. Mark Tinsley and then Dr. Um, Ming Ming Shu, they have also told me that yes, students who do good in Alex in KM 116 do pretty good in KM 116 as well. So they didn't memorize the information I needed to, you don't have to in KM 116. And then finally, I was that I understood the information that I read and reread, but had not applied. And that's where this Bloom's taxonomy come into play, right? Reading and reading is not enough. Make sure you are able to apply those concepts. And these are the reasons people made A in ex on exam two in K115. They previewed and reviewed their notes for every class. And whenever I said they, let's just say most of the students who received an A. They did a little bit of homework at a time, did all the homework problems from Alex and reviewed from class slides, made flashcards, not necessary, but make sure you organize your notes well, and they practice explaining the information to others. So finally, getting the most out of the homework again, something that I told you earlier, do not give up too soon, less than 15 minutes is giving up too soon, and then do not spend too much time on a problem, get than 30 minutes on just one problem. And remember, we do have six hours of office hours every week among the three GTAs and myself. Come prepared and ask us questions. All right. And then if you're able to explain the material to the tutor or instructor or tell them, oh, this is how I have been thinking about this problem, you are being involved in metacognition. And again, you're kind of like mnemonic for this. Do not forget this. Yes, okay, right, when you are doing all of this. And look through this really important slide. This is the slide that I'll be showing you at least twice a week before I begin the lecture. It talks about why reviewing the lecture, watching videos, reviewing after each class, studying, whenever you are studying, making sure you are following this, right? Questioning as to if you're understanding the material or not as you are studying this. And what of the material I'm not understanding? What am I understanding? All right, solving problems with a look at example. And one of the important thing that students tend to do is they do just have a chance to highlight. All right, science education has said that just highlighting the materials shows a false sense of learning. Or even just reading the material. Do not only do that, make sure you Paraphrase, if you're highlighted something, paraphrase it in your own words on a scratch paper as to what you highlighted. If you highlighted something important on a problem, see if you can work that problem out without looking at your highlighted part. And finally, assess your learning periodically. All right, so last slide for the lecture part one for K-116 for today. Lecture part two will be coming soon in the next 10 minutes or so is when I'm going to start recording it is if you do not try these strategies, PAR essay right now with the next 24 hours, you probably will never win. All right, so good luck with K116 and the next slide will be coming soon.